Hey guys, this is Corey B, aka Bing Er, and this is part two of the Tiny Planets tutorial using the DJI Spark and Microsoft Ice. In part one, I showed you how to manually position the Spark to take about 104 photos. Since I posted my first tutorial, DJI actually did an update to their software. So now, if you go down to the Pano button in your image capture settings, you'll actually have a little sphere. In sphere mode, the Spark will autonomously collect 46 photos. It's collecting a 360 degree view and everything right below that. The old way took a lot of time. Max, I would be able to get two Tiny Planet photos collected out of one battery. The new way, it takes about 10% of the battery to collect one whole set or 46 pictures for a Tiny Planet. I'm getting approximately four Tiny Planets out of each battery. The other night, I went downtown Rochester and flew my drone for about an hour and a half. I went through four batteries and took 12 different sets for a Tiny Planet 360 panel. So let me show you how I'm editing those right now. I'm still using Microsoft Ice because it's giving me the best results. Let's go in here. All right, so as you can see, these are my Tiny Planet panoramas. Each folder has 46 images in it, you can see here. And that is their autonomous setting now. When you hit the panel button, you're automatically collecting 46 photos every time. Now, the first couple times, as you can see here, the sun was kind of shining into my lens. And uh, this was making my photos very, very dark. So let's see, down here. So this is the first one that really turned out nicely. I am really happy with these results. What I did was the first photo that I had to take was faced directly away from the sun. So it was facing east and the sun was setting directly behind us to the west. Uh, you can see the reflection here. There's the sunset. It really helps because it, it locks in your white balance right on the first photo and it, if we look back towards the sunset, so this is really washed out, but really this is going to be at the bottom of the photo and we're going to try to minimize that. So first thing you do, just like the old technique, open up your image composite editor. It's free from Microsoft and I'll leave the link down in the description. So what you do here is grab all of these photos, drag them into here. This is going to be way, way, way faster compared to my old way. It was taking about seven to nine minutes to stitch those 104 photos. Now that we're down to 46, it's going to stitch them in about two minutes. All right, and it's stitched, and it looks good. I'm not seeing any stitching errors, but who knows once we blow this up. The next thing you wanna do is click the stereo graphic button, and then we're gonna turn this into a circle by grabbing in the middle and pulling up on it. Now, I've kind of figured out a better technique here. You wanna zoom out a little bit, and you wanna get that horizon, the sky, kind of the same width all the way around there, or pretty close to it at least. Once you have your sky, once it looks like a circle with the pupil right in the middle, uh, you grab this and you center it where you want to have the top and the bottom of your photo. If I had it over here and I stretched it and then I went to rotate it, it's going to look all distorted, which I mean kind of looks cool, but not what we're going after today. So what we want to do, let's unstretch that. Oh, can I even do it? So there you go. You want to center you want to center it first. So what I'm thinking here is I want to have this reflection with the sunset right in the middle. Put that right there. And now I'm going to drag it and distort it. If you want this building to be smaller, you drag it down. I don't think it's the effect that we're going for. It doesn't really pop. What I like to do is drag it up. Um, but too much, it's looking cartoony. And actually, if you go too much, you can't even crop it on the screen anymore. So I like to go about right here. I think that looks great. Let's hit the crop button. This will take about... I don't know, 20 seconds here. And next you crop the edges. Don't worry about cropping uh, these edges out right here because we'll fix that later. I'll show you how to fix that very easy in Photoshop. But what, I, what I've been going for lately is trying to keep it about at a square because if, you, if they're too rectangular, like if we chopped it down to this, it's not gonna look good in Instagram. And I really like using Instagram this last week to edit my photos. So I'm going to try to keep it at a square. That looks fine. Let's go to export here. Now again, this 100% up here, we do not want that at 100%. It is 17,000 by 17,800 pixels right now. I like knocking it down to about 35%. It still gives us great resolution. 
I'm going to export to disk. Let's just throw it on the desktop for now. We're going to call it test1. All right, so what we're going to do now is get rid of these black edges. What I like to do first is duplicate this layer and, layer and delete the background just because it's easier to work with. Um, what I've been doing is hitting the selection button here and selecting these black corners. I'm going to take a little dauber sampler and dab right on the edge here. We're going to look at our gradient and see what we're mixing to, and that looks fine. If you want to change the second color in your gradient, you can click right here and click another dauber over there, wherever we want it. Oh, that looks good. I like that. And then we're just going to draw a line across these edges. We're going to do the same thing on each side. If you need to re-daub the edge to fix your gradient, go right ahead. Like that one looks a little bit too light, so let's undo that. Dab the edge again. Drag our gradient across. Okay, these corners look funny, but we're going to fix them really easily. What I do next is grab the, uh, what is this called, the healing brush? Healing brush, yep. I'm going to make it just a little bigger here. And we're going to select right in here. I'm going to hold the Alt button and then drag it over the edges here. And if you can, try to do your healing brush at like a curve. So it looks like it's the curve of the atmosphere here. I think that looks great. I'm going to save it as our Photoshop file first. And then I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And you know what, before I save it as a JPEG, I'm going to make it a little smaller. So I'm going to go to image size, drop it down to about 3000 pixels. I want, I want it usually to be just under one megabyte. It seems easy to upload for social media and some other forums that I'm a part of. But if you're going to print this, you want it way bigger than one megabyte. From this point, you could use filters in Photoshop, but I really like throwing it over to my phone and Instagramming it. So let's do that right now. So there you go. In a very short amount of time, because of that new DJI update and Microsoft Ice, we're able to produce some really, really eye-popping photos here. And like I said, if you prefer Instagram more, then go with that. If you like the purity of the Photoshop image and the quality of it, just leave it in Photoshop. But go ahead and play with it. Put your own filters on it and make these your own. Put some text on it. Um, I am super excited about this new DJI app. Thank you so much to DJI for updating their software and making it this easy. So thanks for watching today, guys, and subscribe if you want to see more updates to these Tiny Planet tutorials or any other drone work or anything else I'm really working on for that matter. All right, thanks for watching. See you later.